Welcome back. Today we're going to go over the inline mineralization tank, which is just after the radio flow settler. So if you didn't see the video last time about the settler, you should definitely tune into that one because that leads into uh, this next tank. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Our top supporters are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your support. So before I delve into all the details about this, I just wanted to make a quick note that this is still sort of an experimental system. So if you really aren't sure about how you're setting up your aquaponics systems, this may not be for you. Um, I did one of these in the dome greenhouse a few years ago. I've gone through two versions of that now, and this is uh, the third version. Still working out a few of the kinks with it, but uh, overall it seems to be working uh, pretty well. I spent a little bit of time getting the uh, mineralization tank plumbed up, and what's going to happen here is that the solids out of the radio flow separator or settler will come out through here. Uh, there'll be a flexible tubing coming here and then into the um, plumbing for the uh, mineralization tank. And then from here there's going to be a piping that will come up and an air lift that will aerate and lift the uh, solids and liquid up into the tank and it's going to swirl around and keep settling back and uh, keep turning. There'll be another one on the other side. This will basically act like one of the compost brewers that you may have seen uh, where it's just constantly uh, circulating the water. And then uh, there'll be a valve on the end here so I can shut it off and then uh, drain out any of the sludge that's uh, accumulating in the system. So now we'll get a hole drilled in for the top bulkhead fitting. This will be the outlet for the uh, airlift, and it's going to be set right about at the water level. I don't want to have to waste a lot of energy pumping it up. I just want to move the water, so if you keep it right at the water level, you're not lifting it. You're just sort of circulating it instead. I'll probably regret interconnecting these two with a clear tubing. But that's what I have here. Most likely it's going to get algae growth in it. But the nice thing about using clear is you can also see the solids going through to make sure everything's flowing okay. I guess if it algae's over, I'll leave it like that or replace it with a piece of black tubing. On the inside outlet, I'm going to set this elbow up and that will shoot the water out and make it swirl in the tank. That will be used to help make sure that the solids don't just settle at the bottom or all along the sides and keep everything moving around in here. This outlet here is the actual outlet for the, and it will be tied to an overflow. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. On the airlift, I've been debating putting a rubber gasket into this section so that I could insert the air stone in here and put a little hole in there and not have uh, the tubing go down into the piping. And the more I thought about it, I'm not sure if I should do it, but I probably just drop the tubing down uh, through the pipe to test it. But the real deciding factor was it makes it a whole lot easier to assemble the parts by putting all the fittings on and inserting this middle piece without having to stretch a lot of pieces out of the way. A problem with putting the stone in directly to the side is that it will um, become very difficult to replace it if necessary because to take this off I have to drain out this tank which I wouldn't be overly thrilled to have to do. So we're going to try just putting the lines down through the tube itself and hopefully they don't foul up too badly.
right, so let's drop our stones in, give this a little test, see if it actually works. Except for all the PVC sawdust floating atop, it seems to be working pretty well. I think I might change out this 90 degree to either a 60 or a 45 because the water's coming out and just sort of hitting against the wall, which would be slowing it down a hair. So if I can shoot it out so it comes out uh, in tangent with the water, that will be a little bit more efficient. I also probably don't need this extra length of pipe in here. It's not uh, bubbling super hard where it would be bubbling up over that fitting. So you can sort of see in here the water's coming up and then exiting out. I'm definitely going to have to add a baffle on this inner chamber because the water is starting to swirl inside and the goal is to keep it from moving so I'll probably put a thing that looks like a cross down along the bottom that stops it. If you look down into the bottom here, you can see that the heavy debris is getting sucked down to the bottom, which then gets circulated up through the air lift and back into the tank. So it's going to always recirculate all those solids and help keep them aerated. I did decide to make a baffle for this to get the water to slow down a little bit inside of here. So I took some of the scrap window piece from the tank, flattened it out. Make a little cross section for it and hope it slides in here somewhat easily. Throw that back in the tank. The blue baffle works okay, but it still gets some swirling of water in that stilling well. So I 3D printed up this one that has a bunch of baffles in it, which really helps to create a laminar flow. So this is designed just to wedge right into that stilling well. And I actually printed out a couple of them to make a fairly long uh, chamber in here. And this has been working well. I actually have a second one where I made uh, two centimeter squares. And that one works uh, really good. And anything that's settling down in the stilling well just sort of settles down through that without uh, really getting caught on it. I get a little bit of debris on top, but overall I'm really happy with this design. One change that I made to this was I took out the uh, two inch piping that was coming in and rounding over and it, I've actually raised this up in a, another tank uh, to get that up out of the water flow. I was noticing that um, having that submerged part way into the uh, water it was really restricting uh, some of the flow that was coming through. So I sort of got really fancy with this and made um, these 3D printed Things. I don't even know what you call it, a channel, and uh, they essentially sit right above the water line now. So as the, the water is getting uh, lifted up into this, uh, it helps to uh, divert it and uh, shoot the uh, water in the right direction. And that's helped a lot with uh, getting that swirling action to work a little bit better in the tank. It's hard to tell with the reflections that the water, it's not a big vortex but it is moving in here and helping to keep the sides clean. It's just too um, dark to be able to see into here. Overall the, the baffles that I added into here have been working very well to stop the water from moving and allows the settles to settle back down into there and it's got the little tiny overflows that essentially that's the whole water flow leaving this thing. So the water leaving this is really slow, has plenty of time to settle down in this uh, center stilling well and it stays nice and turbulent. And you can see the water's been getting pretty murky over the past few months, which is part algae and a lot of fish uh, waste. So overall that's working well. Right now the largest problem that I'm having, this is basically nothing, I just use it to hold the, the tubing in from lifting itself out. But the biggest problem that I'm having with this right now is uh, the algae. It's a string algae that's been accumulating on the um, air stones, which I was afraid it was going to happen originally. So I'm going to um, be modifying this in a uh, future video to um, deal with uh, not getting debris caught on these air stones. But for now, um, 
once a week or so I have to come out and uh, clean these air stones off just to get the heavy stuff off of it and then drop them back in and it starts right up again. So that's about it for the mineralization tank. Uh, like I said earlier, it's still sort of experimental and I think I'm going to do another video later on at some point on some upgrades that I have in mind for that one. Um, I still have one more to build uh, to deal with the other tank over here. So I may put some of those upgrades into that one. Uh, but for now it seems to be working uh, without too many major issues and um, i got to get a cover on that to help keep the algae under control. Thanks for watching! I had this one last clip of the inside with this cross baffle showing how much turbulence there was in that stilling well. So adding that other one in it really stopped the water flow and you can see here a lot of the solids are working their way out through that drain so that uh, really did solve that problem.